the idea that practicing some form of intermittent fasting is good for you is now pretty pervasive. Lots of people are doing it, and I think you should too, especially if you're metabolically challenged. But you do need to consider when you're doing it. Just focusing on contracting the eating window may not always be enough. Now, I know a lot of the thinking is, well, the timing really doesn't matter that much. What you're trying to do is give your body an opportunity to clean house. So if you do breakfast or you don't do breakfast, it really doesn't matter. It's the length of the window that is key, with shorter being better. But research out of Venezuela tells us a very different story. A story you probably want to pay attention to if you're metabolically challenged. In a nutshell, if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, you should do breakfast. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, our research team signed up 22 card-carrying type 2 diabetics, who, for the record, were breakfast eaters. Now, all the peeps were well controlled, with the average HbA1c clocking in at 7.7%. Now, quite a few of them were managing to keep their diabetes in check through their diet. The rest were using a combination of diet and metformin. But the study was done drug-free. All meds were stopped 24 hours before the study commenced. And since the half-life of metformin is between 4 and 8 hours, that 24-hour break would mean drug levels would be negligible that is not high enough to impact the results. Now to make sure that everyone was on the same page before the big day, the team provided meals for the two days leading up to the study, along with a comprehensive list of do's and don'ts. There was no alcohol allowed and no excessive physical activity either. On the day of the test, the participants arrived at the lab at 7 a.m. after an overnight fast. They were weighed and measured and hooked up to an antecubital vein. Those assigned to have breakfast tucked in. Those not doing breakfast had to wait around until lunch to grab a bite of eat. Now the bites were standardized. All the meals contained approximately 700 kilocalories and the macronutrient ratios were 20% fat, 54% carbs and 26% protein. Breaking the fast switched up the chemistry. No surprises here. As the food landed, fasting biology was abandoned. This can be seen in the drop in free fatty acids, which happened in parallel with a rise in glucose. And the glucose spike prompted insulin and C-peptide levels to rise. The action in this story is not what happens when breakfast is consumed. It's what happens afterwards. The people who munched on breakfast were able to put away the sugar a lot more efficiently than the breakfast skippers at lunchtime. You can see the sugar spike is much lower. Now, the most likely explanation for this is, well, the insulin spike was superior. You can see from this graph that it was definitely faster. And when insulin is out the gate in a jiffy, it gets the job done. And this is what starts that sugar drop. But the benefits didn't stop here. Exactly the same pattern holds for dinner. Now, remember, these people are eating exactly the same meal. And the breakfast peeps have actually eaten more. Yep, more calories in, but better sugar control. Go figure. It's the second meal effect. Scientists have known about it for years. It happens in healthy people and in diabetics. Of course, in healthy folks, the disparity goes completely unnoticed. But in the metabolically challenged, 
the disparity is seen as an unwanted sugar spike. And sugar spikes come with lots of drama. You're probably wondering, why does it happen? Well, at this stage, no one really knows for sure. There are a couple of theories. The first one is that beta cells, well, they don't exactly wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. The reason for this is when they turn in for the night, the insulin production machinery is degraded because there's no point in wasting resources when the insulin requirement is negligible. And let's be honest, it's much easier to rest in silence. The problem with the strategy is it can take a few moments to get back in the swing of things. Basically, beta cells need their morning coffee. By eating early, they've been forced to get out of bed and switched on. So when the next grocery delivery happens, it's a cinch to put it away quickly. It's a good theory, but it's unlikely to really explain the phenomenon in type 2 diabetics. Remember, their beta cells are sleep deprived not nutrient deprived. Aish. Another related suggestion is that it takes time for muscle glycogen synthesis machinery to be turned on. In other words, muscles need a morning cup of coffee too. Mm, but yes, but applies here too. At this stage, it's a biological mystery. But it is biology that you can use. Metabolic pathways are controlled by the circadian clock. And insulin is not an owl. He's a lark. So as the day progresses, the sugar spike to the exact same meal becomes higher and higher. Eating breakfast will keep these spikes in check. To create better body chemistry, if you're metabolically challenged, you should do breakfast and then close the kitchen early. Need some advice on what to do for breakfast? Visit the Better Body Chemistry library page to access content that you're most interested in. And if you're just too busy to study up on the whole thing, sign up for a day of Voxer to get the help and support you need to get your sugar levels in check and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's struggling to keep their sugar levels in check? Share this video with them so they know about the second meal effect. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.